Well, 2021 coming in hot this week with the riots at the Capitol building. I don't have a lot to add to that conversation, nothing that hasn't already been said. It was obviously a very disheartening, horrific display of humanity. It was heartbreaking and discouraging to watch, particularly with our, our children. But on the upside, I am seeing opportunities for unity where there wasn't before. There is uh, pockets of unification where there was once only division. Uh, I, I believe it gives President-elect Biden a better shot of leading us forward. A man for whom, even if you didn't vote for, is someone who you'll now pray for. Uh, so let's continue to be people of prayer, people of hope, uh, people of optimism, because our hope is not anchored in what we see on the media, what happens around us. It is in a God who loves us. So... Uh, Good thing. Stay positive. Uh, COVID is, uh, man, it's still on the move and numbers are up. Uh, we're continuing to monitor that as a church. Uh, I feel like most of us in this town uh, have seen it kind of like the water's coming up around us. Uh, I think we were spared for so long. Many of us didn't know anybody. Now, uh, most everybody knows multiple people. Uh, so as a church, we'll continue to navigate that the best we can. We will not be living fearfully, uh, but we will be acting responsibly. So thank you for being along for the ride uh, on this journey as it continues into uh, this new year. Uh, last week, uh, Jet was setting up the TV at home to watch Church Online, and he, he yells up to me, Hey, Dad, you know you wear the same thing every two weeks? And I'm like, what? And even before I can say no and defend myself, I'm looking at a screenshot of, of me on YouTube from our YouTube page, and like, sure enough, like every two weeks, it's the same thing. And like, in my defense, I've been living out of a suitcase for two months. Like, I'm out of clothes. So sorry, Jed, I can't wear a new outfit every week. Um, but that aside, we're actually getting close to moving. Many of you know we sold our house in early November. Uh, we were looking for one. It was, it was a, a leap of faith. Uh, we're getting close. Uh, like I said, hopefully by the end of the month, we will be in a new home. Uh, but we've been living in, in between since, since November, whatever, early first week of November. And we're like in this season between seasons. We, we move from selling our home and having no idea where we're gonna go to, oh, we see something on the horizon. This looks like it could work out. It begins to work out, this, this new place, but, but we're not there yet. We're still in the in the in-between, right? And even when we walk in on day one, it's gonna be not what it will look like on day four or, or next month or next year. Like there's progression in this process. There's, there's, there's steps in, that have to take place and it doesn't all happen at once. And we would love for that a miracle. We are praying for a miracle like, Lord, just give us that house by Christmas, Lord. And it, and, it, and it just didn't quite happen that way. But sometimes the progress is a little slower. Sometimes progress feels slow. Sometimes those seasons between seasons can feel really long. And we tend to want to understand our seasons that we live in, uh, like weather seasons, uh, like spring, summer, fall, winter. But often it's not that clean cut. Uh, in fact, even other cultures, when you, when you look at their language and their words for seasons, there's often dozens of words for, for seasons or weather, like, including Icelandic, where they have 156 words describing the wind and dozens of words for seasons. Because it's not just you move from one to the next all the time. It's like, oh, cool, winter's over, uh, now we're into spring. We, we know that's not true. The seasons sort of impact one another. Sometimes they influence one another. And so we're living in an in-between season right now. I think many of us feel like that. We're this, living this in-between season. You're praying for a miracle. You're praying to get out of it. And it's not quite happening. We look at a guy today in Mark uh, who had a little bit of this experience with Jesus. This is Mark 8. You can listen or follow along in your Bibles. Uh, Mark is pretty far back in the Bible. If you have an app, uh, scroll down to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, and this is kind of Peter's telling of Jesus' story. Uh, we're in chapter 8. It's about halfway through Jesus' ministry. He's well known at this point. He has been active doing miracles and teaching. And we find him here in verse 22. When they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and said, Can you see anything now? The man looked around. Yes, he said, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again and his eyes were open. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him away, saying, Don't go back in the village on your way home. 
Uh, so first of all, this town, Bethsaida, uh, Jesus is not a big fan of this town. Like, I don't know if I could say it. I think I could say that. He wasn't a real big fan of this town. Uh, and Bethsaida was a, uh, a fishing village in, on the Sea of Galilee. So this is where Jesus spent a lot of time. Uh, a number of the disciples were from Bethsaida, Peter, Andrew, and Philip. Uh, Jesus spent a lot of time there, actually. He performed multiple miracles in this town. Uh, Jesus had done many mighty works in this area, in this village. But the townspeople had rejected him multiple times in unbelief. Leaf. As a result, he actually pronounced a, a, a woe upon them. This is Matthew eleven twenty one. 21. It goes like this. What sorrow awaits you, Bethsaida? For if the miracles I did, for if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago, clothing themselves in burlap and throwing ashes on their heads to show their remorse. I tell you, Tyre and Sidon, we better off on judgment day than you. So, so Jesus has, has kind of hard words for this place of unbelief, for these people who are lacking faith. And Jesus is very patient and very gracious. But God's favor often accompanies our faith. God's favor often accompanies our faith. In fact, God almost always works in accordance with our faith. He works alongside our faith. That's why we're called to participate in our faith. We're called to ask. We are called to pray. We are called to make our requests known to God because he wants to draw us in closer to him. It's not for him. It's for us. He works according to our faith. His favor accompanies our faith. And Jesus, he doesn't really like being around people who, who lack faith in him. Now, he's, again, he's very gracious and he loves people who don't know. But man, at some point, when they reject him, he's like, ah, I, I, forget it. I, I'm sorry for you guys. I'm sorry. Man, we all would feel that way. We all desire people to believe in us. And for Jesus, what he realizes is the more he reveals and the less they believe, the greater the judgment. And so it's in some, some extent merciful of Jesus. I, I, I don't want them to even see any more miracles, these people. Because they're going to continue to reject me and there's going to be greater judgment on them. He's basically, basically saying, it would be better if you didn't know. It would be better if you didn't know. It would be better if you weren't even implicated, because now you're accountable. Now you're accountable. And so we see in this text, he's in this town uh, that we know uh, is, is not full of people of faith. It's people who reject Jesus. He's just kind of passing through. But we see some people, it says some people, the Bible is full of this, some people bring a blind man to Jesus. Some people. We don't know their names. We don't know their story. We don't even know where they're from. We don't know how far they traveled. Some people. Some people bring a blind man to Jesus. And the point of this activity in the text, so we see this multiple times with people helping people, is God uses people to get people to God. God uses people to get people to God. I was coming out of Lowe's a few weeks ago. Uh, coming out on mills, and I noticed police lights coming, coming up mills, and I stop and, and, and back up and I look down, and I see this police FU, SUV like slowly coming up uh, mills, uh, and I notice he's, he's pushing a, a little sedan, like bumper to bumper, pushing this car up the road, and the driver's in this little car steering it, presumably it broke down, uh, and this guy in his police SUV comes up behind and he just starts pushing it, and it was pretty awesome to watch, because the officer was smiling. And I didn't even know that was something they could do. But what was the officer getting the car to a safe place? I'm going to push this car to a safe place. And what it was different then was like, oh, a car breaks down, you get a we'll call a tow truck. No, it's like, you stay in the car, you get to even steer, but I'm going to push. You stay in, I know it's broke down, but you can still steer, I'm going to push. And we think of this blind man getting to Jesus. We ask, well, why wouldn't he just call out to Jesus himself? Like these guys had to bring him to Jesus, and they're begging Jesus Please, please see this man. Because certainly we've seen others with infirmities cry out to Jesus and, 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 and make their way to him. Jesus was not afraid of, uh, of those with conditions. He spent a lot of time there. Uh, yeah, the blind man on Mark 10 will call out to Jesus. But, but why, don't, why do sort of any of us not call out to God? Or even the help uh, of others? And you think about this situation, like perhaps he just didn't believe. Perhaps he didn't believe. Uh, many people in that area, even though Jesus was doing work, he probably didn't believe. And sometimes that believes like, well, it probably works for them, but it doesn't work for me. Uh, it's okay for that story. I heard about that across the sea. But yeah, I don't think it's going to happen here. I don't believe. And so perhaps he didn't believe, but some people believed for him. Some people believed for him. We need people to believe for us. Our belief sometimes is not just enough, or our lack of belief doesn't count us out. Because we need sometimes people to believe for us. 
Maybe he thought Jesus wouldn't be interested. Well, you know what? Some people were, were interested for him. Some people proved that Jesus was interested in him. Some people. Maybe he was just strictly incapable. Maybe he was too far off and his blindness was too harsh and he just couldn't make his way. He couldn't move, which is a very honest place to be. Now, often that's uh, mental or emotional for some of us. We just can't do it. We are incapable. You know what? Some people were capable for him. Some people were capable for him because we all need some people around us. Whether it's our belief, our faith, uh, our, our mental, emotional, physical health, we need some people. I can't do it. You know what? Some people can do it for you. And so they get this man to Jesus. They beg Jesus because he's like, I'm not doing any more work here in this village. I'm finished with you guys. And they're begging him, please. All right, all right. But I'm going to lead him away. I'm going to lead this man away from this village. We're not doing it here. And, and in one sense of, the, of this context, hey, we're, we're done with this village. We're done with this city. But for this man, this creates a special moment. Jesus said, hey, listen, let's step away from the despair of the everyday so we can begin to step into your new life. Let's step away from where you're used to be. Let's step away from that environment. Let me lead you out of that environment. We need to create a little space from where you used to be to create a new space for where you're going to go. For who you're going to become. And so Jesus helped him step across the line from unbelief to belief by stepping across and out of the line of his old life. And some of us need to hear that. You need to be led away from Jesus. You need to get out of the environment that you're in. It's maybe it's not a healthy environment. You just step away from that. Let Jesus lead you out of that. Let him lead you away. Step out of the everyday as you begin to live into the new extraordinary. Jesus begins his healing process with this man. and uh, It's a recovery process. And it's interesting in this sense uh, that often Jesus does perform miracles and it happens right away. This was of a, a, a multiple stages with this man. And it's not because he, he has to. It's because he desires to. And he, and he, he uses spit, which is, sounds kind of gross to us, like he's spitting his eyes. Um, but, but healing, people of healing and, and miracle workers of the time, this is for medicine. This is something they would do to soothe the, the pain. So the man kind of receives it, doesn't run away. He's like, okay, well, he spit in my eyes. And, and that may soothe some of the physical pain. And then Jesus says, hey, do you see? Do you see anything? Do you see anything? The man looks up. He says, oh, I see people. I see people. They look like trees walking around. I see people, I know they're people, but they're not clear. And what we don't quite know, was he excited about that? Was he excited to see, like, oh my gosh, I see stuff. I see people, uh, they don't really look like people, they look like trees, but I can see. Or was he disappointed, like, oh, yeah, I see, like, now I see walking trees. whoop de doo Disappointment. Either way, because you and I have been in both places, where we're excited about what God's doing, even if it's like doesn't feel like it's gone all the way. And sometimes we're just strictly disappointed, like I'm disappointed. Either way, what we do know is that Jesus isn't done. He wasn't done with this guy. He wasn't done with this man. He's not done with you. Jesus isn't done. If he was excited about Lord vision, Jesus isn't done. If he was disappointed about his vision, Jesus isn't done. He's not done with us when we're grateful for what we have. And he's not done with us when we're longing for more. He's not done with you. Wherever you're at, if you're feeling really good and you're grateful and you're feeling filled and positive, Jesus isn't done with you. If you're down and out and disappointed, so that I thought there'd be more. I thought God would have done something more by now. He's not done with you. He's not done with you. See, sometimes when we ask God for giant miracles, which is good to ask, we should pray and believe for those things because sometimes we get them right away. But sometimes when we ask God for giant miracles, He answers us with gradual change. He answers with gradual change, like, God, please, I need this. I, I, I'm, I'm begging you. I'm asking you for this miracle. Maybe it's a job or a relationship. It's a house. God, please, I pray that we can get into a house. Like, okay, cool. I'm going to help you. And you're like, wait, why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? And sometimes that gradual change in our life, in our circumstances, in our environments, in the context, in your prayers, it's sometimes it's hardly noticeable until you look back and you see, wow, that was a miracle. That was a miracle. When we were looking to, to get into our house, we were really praying, God, I, I, know it's gonna, uh, I, I know it's a lot to ask, but if somehow you lead us to the right house, we can get in by Christmas, Lord. 
could we just get it? And you know, that kind of came and went. That wasn't going to happen. And then and it kind of dragged out day by day by day. At some point, and what's happened now, we're looking at like, man, this house we're getting into is a miracle. It wasn't on my time, it was on God's time. And that change along the way, it's hard to see when you're living in it. It's hard to see the incremental movement of God when you're kind of stuck in the, in the mud of your own sort of self-pity. One of the things we pulled from our house before we moved uh, was the door frame where we measured our kids. And, and maybe you have this or have seen it or, or were part of one if, you know, as you were a kid. Uh, kind of this classic marker, right? There's like nearly 100 hash marks on this, on this white door frame with names and dates and uh, numbers marked over 11 years. Right? And the majority of them are very crowded and close together from frequent excited trips to say, measure me, measure me, measure me. Because it's excited to grow. It really is. Right? You want to, you're excited to grow. But sometimes those trips to the doorpost were disappointing. Because like, oh, I thought I, I thought I grew more. And it was like these two lines like right next to each other. Until you look further down the post and you realize like, wow, I actually have grown a lot. I have grown a lot. J.R. Tolkien says that little by little one travels far. Little by little one travels far. And I want to encourage you today... You, whoever you are, I want to encourage you, you have come a long way. You have traveled far. And you might feel stuck in this season between seasons. You may feel stuck in your relationship, in your career, in your prayer life. You may feel stuck in this place of being stuck in neutral and not going anywhere. You have come far. You have traveled far. Little by little, you have traveled far. Look back. And someday you're going to look back at where you are now like, wow. Wow, I, had, I did travel far. I have traveled far. You have come a long way. Even now, you have come a long way. And keep praying for those miracles. Keep believing for those miracles. But know this, not all, happen, no, not all miracles happen overnight. Some miracles, they happen over time. Not all miracles happen overnight, but they happen over time. And believe that and be encouraged. And I'm going to stand and pray hope with you. So God, thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are a God of miracles. Thank you that you are a God of your own timing. I pray for those who are discouraged right now, that you would lift their spirits. Or maybe that's a, a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or, or career change or, or finances or, or mental health or physical health or that you feel stuck. Lord, I pray they'll be encouraged right now that you are doing something in this season between seasons, that you have a plan, that there is something good on the other side. We take hold of that. We think that we can hope in you. We think that you do not let us down. Lord, we thank you that you love us more than we even know. So Holy Spirit, encourage us right now so that even we may be an encouragement to others. Good night, I pray, amen. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out. Please do not forget your kids. We will see you soon. Peace.